This is a presentation on specimen collection, transportation and laboratory diagnosis of COVID-19 for professionals and trainees in health related fields. COVID-19 is caused by an enveloped RNA virus which belongs to the family Coronaviridae. It is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Related Coronavirus 2. As visible in the screen, the primary route of transmission is through respiratory droplets. The WHO case definitions of suspected probable and confirmed cases are given here. Laboratory testing is essential for diagnosis and confirmation of recovery of COVID-19. This slide explains recommended types of specimens, collection materials, temperature to be maintained during transportation, storage temperature till testing and special guidelines which need to be taken into consideration. The most commonly collected upper respiratory tract specimens are oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal swabs. It is recommended to collect both oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal swabs in the same container with viral or universal transport media. The sputum must be collected in a sterile wide mouth container. The sample should be collected by a trained healthcare professional. Usually, it is done by an infectious control nurse. Prior to collection, health staff must wear personal protective equipment. Subject should avoid eating, drinking or smoking 30 minutes prior to the collection. Health staff professional should verify that the subject's mouth is empty prior to the collection. Oropharyngeal specimen collection. Step number one. Have the patient tilt their head backwards, open their mouth and stick out their tongue. Use a wooden tongue depressor to hold the tongue in place. Step number two. Without touching the side of the mouth, use a sterile flocked swab to swab the posterior nasopharynx and the tonsillar arches. Step number three. Insert a swab into VTM, securely break the shaft and carefully discard remaining top part into the infectious waste container with lid. Ask the patient to take off their mask and blow the nose into a tissue to clear excess secretions from the nasal passages. Tilt the patient's head back slightly and ask the patient to close their eyes as it will lessen the discomfort. Gently insert the swab along the nasal septum to the nasopharynx until resistance is felt. The swab should reach a depth equal to the distance from the nostrils to the outer opening of the ear. Leave the swab in place for several seconds to absorb secretions and then slowly remove the swab while rotating it. Collection of sputum. The sputum is the only possible specimen from lower respiratory tract as bronchoalveolar lavage 
and tracheal aspirates are highly discouraged. This should be performed in a separate closed room. Switch off all fans and air conditioners prior to the collection. The patient should be educated on sample collection method prior to the procedure. Rinse the mouth with water before the collection. Expectorate deep cough directly into the container. The patient should close the container tightly with a lid and place it inside a Ziploc bag. Laboratory readiness for sample collection and transportation is important. Primary packing materials such as tissue paper, tape and paraffin are required. Secondary packing materials, namely large leak-proof secondary container such as a Ziploc mat, must be there. Outer packing materials such as a thermocooler box or ice box with hard board box is required. Preparation of sample for transportation to distant laboratory. This slide shows the preparation of sample for transportation to a distant laboratory. All personal protective equipment should be used during the procedure. Properly closed sample vial should be sealed with paraffin. Place it inside a Ziploc bag and then wrap it with absorbent material like cotton wool or wadding. Securely place this inside a secondary container, preferably a plastic container. The container is kept outside the outer container. Keep some ice packs or frozen gel packs between second and outer container. Accurately filled laboratory request should be handed over with the package. This slide shows the unpacking of samples inside the biosafety cabinet. Laboratory confirmation of SARS coronavirus 2. The real-time RT-PCR is considered as the most accurate test for the detection of SARS coronavirus 2. A positive RT-PCR test is diagnostic of the infection and two consecutive negative tests are needed to confirm the recovery of a COVID-19 patient. Why testing is needed? Once the SARS coronavirus 2 enters human body, it prefers the respiratory tract. The virus multiplies in epithelial cells and appears in mucous secretions. The virus is active during the incubation period, an acute stage of the disease. The spread of the virus from infected individuals to the healthy individuals take place during this period. Later, it will disappear from the system during the recovery. Therefore, to identify the disease at an early stage and prevent transmission of the infection, one needs to demonstrate the presence of virus in respiratory secretions. Types of tests. Demonstration of the presence of a viral agent could be done using several methods like antigen detection, election microscopy, and culture techniques. Identification of genetic material through molecular techniques has become popular as they are more sensitive and reliable than most of the techniques. The polymerase chain reaction is the widely accepted choice for this purpose. This conventional PCR is designed to amplify the selected part of DNA of an organism through repeated cycles but fail to amplify RNA. Why RT-PCR? Since SARS coronavirus 2 is an RNA virus, the conventional PCR is unable to detect it. Therefore, to detect RNA viruses, including SARS coronavirus 2 or RNA containing genetic material, an additional step should be added to PCR 
which converts the RNA to its complementary DNA. This is the reverse of the usual transcription that occurs in cells during protein synthesis. Hence, it has been given the name reverse transcription or RT. This technique is known as RT-PCR. Why real-time RT-PCR? The amplified product is detected at the end of the program number of PCR cycles in standard PCR and RT-PCR. One has to wait till the end of the test to go see the results and decide the presence or absence of the virus, hence some delay in confirming the disease. The real-time RT-PCR is another step ahead of this standard technique by detecting the amplification of the targeted genetic material while PCR is running or in real time. It reduces a considerable time taken to issue the report and very much suit for a pandemic like COVID-19. Why real-time RT-PCR? As the figure shows, the following steps are found in the RT-PCR test. A. Specimen is collected from oropharynx and nasopharynx of an individual. B. RNA is extracted from virus. Rest of the steps in real-time RT-PCR takes place in a single tube in one go. Step C shows the transcription of RNA into complementary DNA. Detection of products in real time could be done using SYBR green or Tachman probes. Step D shows the test during Tachman probes once the primers have bound to the DNA. They provide a starting point for the DNA polymerase to help copy it. DNA polymerase then degrades the bound probe which results in an increased fluorescent signal. The fluorescence increases as copies of viral DNA are made as shown in the step E. If the fluorescence level crosses a certain threshold, the test is considered as positive. Real-time RT-PCR The amount of fluorescence emitted is proportional to the amount of PCR product and indicates the initial viral load. The test has 60% to 80% sensitivity for coronavirus, relatively faster and has a low potential of contamination. RT-PCR test is performed by specially trained and qualified medical laboratory technologists. A laboratory consultant validates the final result before releasing. Laboratory aids support the above categories in cleaning and resetting of laboratories. Antibody tests or serological tests. About 80% of COVID-19 infections are mild. The antibody test only takes effect after a few days if antibodies have formed in the blood. It's not suitable for detecting active infections in the early phase of the disease. Point of care handheld antibody tests are currently being developed, but it needs further research to increase sensitivity and specificity. WHO encourages for researching on following topics and sharing of data to better understand and thus manage the COVID-19 outbreak. Dynamics of immunological response, disease severity in various populations, the relationship between viral concentration and disease severity, the duration of shedding and relation to clinical picture, development and validation of useful serological assays, Comparative studies of available molecular and serological assays. Optimal percentage of positive cases that requires sequencing to monitor mutations that might affect the performance of molecular tests.